Ugh, sorry if I'm looking rugged. I am tired. I've been up since 5 this morning, swimming for about two and a half hours. Anyways, um, Legend of Korra, Book 2, Spirits, Episode 5, Peacekeepers. Still got it. This is a good episode. Um, it's not as good as Civil Wars Part 2, but it's um, we get some really unexpected things happening in this. Um, so Korra and the bunch are back in Republic City because they need to get the president's help to support the uh, South because the North is pretty much taking over the South. And we meet a few more colorful characters along the way. Uh, we meet um, uh, President, uh, I think his name is, I think his name is Raikou, or Raikou or something. It, it sounds like Raikou, like the Pokemon. Um, I'm not sure what nationality he's exactly, because he wears purple. So, anyways, he doesn't exactly want to support that. Support the truce, because he can't just have them get waltz, waltzing into a war like that, because that could, that could end up being bad. Um... But, and then we see more of Varric. Uh, Varric is, like, I think my favorite character of this season already. Um, Eska's still fun. Eska, you get a good laugh. Um, uh, what else is there? Uh, what else is happening? Oh, yeah, we get some really big things happening. Some really major twists as well. Uh, one of them I'm going to spoil. So if you haven't seen the episode, please watch it before you do this. Watch it before you watch this. Um... So yeah, uh, at a summit with a bunch of uh, southern water tribe people in Republic City, um, uh, pretty much having like a rally somewhere in the middle of the city, uh, a big, a huge bomb goes off in some important building. I'm assuming it's like the embassy for the South Pole or something. And you actually see a statue of Sokka holding his boomerang, so that's pretty cool. Uh... That's pretty neat. So a bomb goes off, but Mako, you know, he's back on his police job. You see, that wasn't exactly Northern Water Tribe people that did it. You see, it was a few firebenders that did it, so or was a firebender. Well, the people wearing Fire Nation clothing, firebending, Fire Nation clothing. So that says something. Uh, what else? So yeah, that happens. So Mako's sort of trying to figure that out, and you really see Korra and Mako's relationship sort of in a very strange position. Like, I thought it was in a strange position when the season started, because Mako doesn't really know where he stands on Korra. Well, that's how I see it. Like, he wants to help her, but he likes to remain neutral. Like, he doesn't want to just say, okay, I'll do what you do, because that, that would seem like he's just saying it. Nor does he want to express his full opinion, because that could go against what Korra is, be believes in. Um, anyways... Uh, so Korra, Varric, and Bolin have this plan. They're not, the president doesn't want to support a full invasion of the South. So what Korra wants to do is he just wants to just somehow get the troops. General Iroh. General Iroh returned! Dante Bosco! Um, and he's, and, uh, <laughs> he's like, if we so happen to do a routine training exercise, and we so happen to run into you know, some resistance at the South Pole. We might have to defend ourselves. <laughs> uh, but then uh, the president sort of figures it out. What actually it is, uh, Mako tells the president that Korra's planning something. And then the big thing, Mako breaks up with Korra. Yes, you heard it, folks. Uh, Makora, or however it is, is no longer a couple. And... I shed a tear at that because I like their relationship. I, I read many a fan fiction and wrote many a fan fiction on it. But I think it's the way they do it because, um, you know, Mako, you know, Mako's an officer, a detect is he a detective? I think he might be a detective. Um, no, he's going for the rank detective. I, I don't know how police ranks work. Um, so yeah, uh, the president asked him a direct question. He can't lie like that because that could you know, he could lose his job, he could go to prison, he could get court martial. Who knows? Um, so yeah, and then so Mako brings up a few points, saying, "You know what? I can't sit here worrying about you, thinking you're about to lose it, for and have time for our relationship." And Cora's like, "Then it's like they both just go at one another. They're not like fighting. They're just yelling and yelling." 
And then finally, and then he bring, and then Mako brings up the whole relationship thing. And then Cora's like, "What do you mean? I'm breaking up with you, all right?" And you see Cora, sad, obviously. Um, oh yeah, General Iro tells her to go to the Fire Nation um, and to meet with his grandparents. So, and if I'm correct, his grandfather is Zuko, and if I. If it's also uh, if I'm also correct, Zuko is apparently still alive. One of the few characters of you know the first series that is still alive. So that could be interesting. But then there's the ending, and you know cliffhanger endings are good, but not like this. What it is, Korra steals a boat and is just like speeding away to the Fire Nation. That must be fairly far because, like, yeah, Republic City is like like west, but like it's still fairly far from the. Especially where they need to go, where she needs to go, especially on her own. Um, oh yeah, Bolin's. There's a, there's a subplot with Bolin and Varric. Varric is wanting to make propaganda film for the troops in order to support an invasion to aid the South. Um, yeah, uh, something like that. And I think that that's what I think. One thing I was reading is that the purpose of Another, like, thing with this season is that Bolin's trying to figure out where he belongs, which, that can make for some interesting ideas. Um, so far, he knows how to play the crowd, I guess. Like, when it, he's, there's a scene where he's like, if I don't know what to say, I just say Republic City and we're the best and stuff like that. And Varric's like, hmm, you're a smart kid. And you see Ginger again. <laughs> She's a redhead, not like a ginger ginger. Um, I guess ginger, anyway. Oh man, oh yeah, oh, yeah. ginger. <laughs> oh, there's totally not something in my pants right now. <laughs> um, but then there's the ending, like I'm saying. Uh, Eska, Desna and Eska find Korra while she's speeding, and um, they're ambushing her. They destroy her boat, and she's fighting back. And then a Category 6 Kaiju attacks. <laughs> I am not joking. A Category 6 Kaiju attacks. Like... Okay, I've made that joke, like, a few times already, but, like, these things are freaking kaijus. Like, they come out of the water, they're huge, and they're just a destructive force of nature. But, um, but this thing was cool, and Korra, she goes into the Avatar state and attempts to do what uh, Onalok did, to sort of calm it down, but then it backfires and is eaten by the spirit the kaiju, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, it's eaten by the, the possessed spirit. Now, admittedly, I thought that was a bit just like... You know, I mean, yeah, it was said, you know, these spirits are out there and they're attacking ships and stuff. But I thought that was just a bit too convenient. I mean, well, you know, Eska and Desna, they were trying to, like, uh, Unalak said early on, early on in the episodes, like, I need you to get the Avatar alive. Uh, just something about it just seemed a bit... Oh, whatever. But it was a good episode, and I give it 9 out of 10. Or 8.5. 8 out of 10. Bye.